getting tighter every week. The draft is on its way, and we're going to walk you through tonight the best fits for Kansas City. It's your Q&A, but we're going to start out with what I know you want to know about Chiefs Kingdom. Welcome to RGR Football. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue with Dad Harms, who's really in charge of all this, although actually that's Avery. We'll probably see her again later tonight. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. Maybe. Uh, it's been a long grind. The draft guide is out. We're going to show you some of it tonight as you guys ask your question, and we address some of your concerns about where the Chiefs are going and who are the fits that really make sense here, not just at the top as, as we always talk about number 32, but as we go down the draft as well. So I'm excited, Dan. I was able to take a, 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 a deep breath. Over the weekend, <laughs> and I go back to it, be a little bit fresher. Uh, run just a the little run, bit, you know, just yeah. a little bit. Like, we took a little bit of a breath. I got some more work done on Sunday. Um, and my wife took Avery to the zoo, I, you know, I had some work to do, so she gave me a day off. Um, so that was nice getting to just kind of do a little bit, a little bit of work here, do some housework, take a little bit of relaxation. But now, this week, I am packed. Once again, I'm back and I've got like six or seven shows that I'm doing this week outside of us. I've still, you know, I've got Javon Baker we're going to do for Wednesday. I'm going to be up tonight doing that. So like there's, you get like a couple of days and it's like, oh, guess what? Draft's not here yet. You're not done. <laughs> nope. nope, 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 nope. Got to power through. But that breath comes in a little bit handy. So the week in group, I know how you feel and uh, I, I, I pity the fool. It stops now because this is the home stretch, folks. Make sure you like, sub, hit the bell here as we get ready for the draft. If you are new to us, he Dan, I'm Ryan. We're, this is what we do is go through everything that we know about the NFL draft right now. Obviously, it's Chiefs-centric, but if you are not a Chiefs fan, that's all right. We've got other stuff for you. Uh, just tonight, we started the series where we're going to rank some of our top five groups at these position groups that are coming in this draft class. Um, Dan's got one coming tomorrow. My quarterbacks just went up tonight. You can see it right here. And no, it's not going to be your typical after this, dude. Uh, stuff's going to get a little bit crazy. So I'm just going to tell you the truth as I see it. Dan won't agree <laughs> with me. You probably won't either, but I'm right. So we'll see what happens. Check it out on NFL33.com. And uh, you can get subscribed over there. It is behind the paywall as everything is this time of year because it is our core draft content. But check it out because... There's a lot going on, and we put a lot of effort into it, and uh, including new backgrounds that we're going to show you as well. So uh, without further ado, before we get to the questions, Dan, prospect of the day, who's who's on your mind today? Well, who's on my mind is Javon Baker, because that's who I'm about to do the, the draft <laughs> breakdown on. But in, like, totality, I, I think one of the big, the, the big names that's kind of circling right now is Tavondre Sweat. And we've seen Tavondre Sweat is was in Kansas City today or they were meeting with him via Zoom or whatnot um, to, to have an interview and talk about, well, hey, buddy, what's uh, what's going on? So you said you were all done partying and stuff, and here you are getting a DWI uh, right before the draft. So what's going on there? Also, your weight, buddy. You were near 390 at the end of the season, and then you didn't weigh in at the Senior Bowl, and then you're like, okay, I got them to 360 for the combine. So, uh, yeah. What's going on? Are we going to have to worry about this if we take you on day three? Because I don't think there's any team that's going to take him before day three at this point with everything that's going on. I think fourth round is probably in where he's going to end up. So there's a lot riding on a very talented football player. Like last year, it all came together for Tavondre. And yes, he has weight concerns. He has effort concerns in the fourth quarter because of conditioning. And it felt like he got heavier as the season goes along. And that typically doesn't happen for players because you lose weight during the season because of how much you're preparing, how much you're playing, and everything like that. So that raises a lot of red flags for teams. And the Chiefs, again, needing interior defensive line help and maybe looking at an opportunity to take on another reclamation project, which they seemingly love to do, they want to know as much information about this player as they possibly can. So Obviously, today they were meeting with him to, I guarantee you, ask him tons and tons and tons of questions <laughs> and get to the point of this player. Because if you're going to be in Kansas City, you're going to have to play in the fourth quarter. A ton, you're going to have to play in the fourth quarter. You're going to have to play in the fourth quarter in the postseason. Again, I have said this so many times. They have played the most football of any team since Patrick Mahomes took over as the quarterback. The most football, okay, in the postseason. 
You're not getting a break. This is not a 13 game season, guys. It's now a 17 game season with three plus postseason games usually. How are you going to play in the fourth quarter in week 18, in week one of the of the playoffs? How is this going to work out for you? So that's what they need to do. And that's why he's on my mind today. That's a very, very good point because it's a lot of questions, but you got to see whatever his weight is today. How does he move today? That's mm -hmm. where they got to base their, their evaluation because almost nothing in this process has been consistent. I, I do yeah. like the prospect and his fit and what he can do for the Chiefs, but it is a definite, definite question. And I'm just not sure how far they're going to go. But hey, if it comes to, especially if there's a trade back and you're at the top of day three, I love that. Get in there, get somebody that can make an impact. We talked about Isaiah Bugs being on this roster, and we haven't seen mm -hmm. him yet. And there's just there's not enough question there. And yes, everybody's back, but you always need more D linemen. I, I just he's a guy that has to be a rotation. There's no doubt about it. I don't care what his weight is, but this yeah. is like kind of the perfect setup for him to fit into a role where he can just rotate and he doesn't have to play 60 snaps a game. So we'll see. <clears throat> that said. Folks, we appreciate all of your effort. If you want in to the memberships to get our inside slants, you can get there as well by clicking join. I'm going to show you some of the draft guide as we go through some of your questions here coming up in just a moment. You can get that at rogueapc.com. Go there and use the code RGR. Don't forget the code. Had a lot of nice folks been buying the draft guide the last week. Not enough people using the code. Like I put it out there so that you can get the discount. Use it. I love you, RGR fans. And we're here for yes. you, so please use that code. Get a little bit off the top of, of that cost, and I really, really do appreciate you guys just being interested in it. So without further ado, we'll get to the questions, and Dan, you can start the, the top one, and I'll, uh, I'll get into getting the guide online. Of course. I, I do I do want to point out that there is something in here about buying it without using PayPal, which I'm sure at Rogue APC you can do that. Um, but we'll get to that here in just a second when we get the draft guide up. Um, Steven, thank you very much for being here. One of our members at RGR. There should be a join button down here. Over here, if you guys are not a member, you want to get signed up and into that rookie level, you guys get all of our rants, which I think we have a couple of coming up this week. Uh, a couple of members' videos coming up this week for you guys. So it's been a little bit of a, a wait. We've had a lot of work going on the last couple of months, but we are getting back into getting some more members' content. And this offseason, we'll probably do some some streams on Zoom and things like that too, uh, or just some, something like that to get you guys a little bit more involved. But thank you, Steve, for your question. What Chiefs from last year's injured reserve list uh, could be big depth pieces this year? Well... I'm trying to recall players on the IR last year, uh, to be very honest with you. But I think Nazi Johnson is the one that comes to, to mind right now. Um, not even just depth piece, but he could be your starter if the Chiefs don't go corner early. And you're looking at as another situation where he's in a position to make a play for the roster, for not just the roster, but a starting role. Because he, again, signs pointed to him being the starter outside and next to Legereus Sneed in those nickel sets. So if he can continue on that recovery pace, get back to where he was, he's someone that can not only create that depth that we saw last year, but get them even better at the cornerback position in terms of where they are right now. Because Legereus Need not being in Kansas City is going to put a, a, a damper on the cornerback position outside of, of uh, Trent McDuffie. I know everyone doesn't want to hear it, but if Nazi doesn't come back to what he was playing at last year, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. I, I still have hope for Nick Jones, but we don't know. We just don't know. There's just too many things we don't know. There are, I will say, a slew of nickel corners in this draft class, though. So uh, when they get down to their day three guys, like, oh, we're going to pick that guy that nobody's seen want that's going to like, you know, be a pro bowler for us. It, it's probably going to be a nickel inside guy, so just be prepared. It's going to be great. <clears throat> um, <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, this is the question, uh, Brady. I don't, I don't know if you're, you're new here or not, but we like to have – it's easier for us to pick out some questions. So if you do have a question, put some question marks at the beginning so we can pick it out of the chat because we usually stack them up as we're going. But uh, he asks if there's any way to use uh, to buy the guy without using PayPal. Um, I understand not wanting to use PayPal for some things and having a security issues. So uh, why don't we uh, let Brady in on the, how we can get that? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm just going to run through uh, the selection here. You should be able to use a credit card as well. Um, and I, I don't, do Venmo and that kind of stuff. That's an extra layer that again exposes people yeah. 
to what they're not wanting to give away in terms of like their banking information. So uh, we just kept it to credit cards and PayPal. Those are the two. Um, I, of course, am going to have to go through there. PayPal is going to process the credit card, but you can still use the credit card there. Um, that's how that my system works on the back end. So don't be alarmed. You go in there and you, you enter the code. You should be able to enter your credit information without a problem. So don't be alarmed by it being there on the uh, on the PayPal site because that's who's going to process the information for us. Yeah. Since they do other things for us, including uh, store and the, and the rest of things. So not a concern. If you have any issues, uh, reach out to me at RGR Podcast at Gmail, and I'll help you through it. No big deal. Awesome. Very thank you. Hopefully that helps you out, Brady, because we would all want everyone to be able to get the guide that wants the guide. Like That's the point, right? We want everyone to be able to get this, this information that we've worked on, it, and hopefully it helps you guys plan through you the top 100-ish players because that's generally what we, we we strive for. Days one and two, Um, some guys that, that end up falling into tears into day three, and we usually get those as, you know, the Chiefs draft them. So we will uh, do, <laughs> do more on that uh, as we get through. But Lee... Thank you for your question. Another one of our members here. Did uh, Do you see this draft as being more offense, especially an offensive line, wide receiver, running back, and tight end? Um, I, I know that people are like wanting the Chiefs to draft a tight end this year, Ryan, but I don't know about you. feels like they're not going to again. They're just going to be like, nah, we're good. <laughs> what are you feeling uh, about? Man, like that's that's going to be my fear. Like I think there's, there's enough depth that I'm going to dig it. So I wish that they would find someone. Um, and I'm going to get past the quarterbacks here. Um, the running backs are deep as well. And so the fact that running backs on there, we know we've talked ad nauseum about O-linemen and wide receivers. The tight end, I think, is going to be an opportunistic pick. And I think the running back is going to be as well. And uh, I wish I could zoom in here more. I'm going to try to do that right now, see if I can correct the spacing on this, just so can, you guys can see some of our rankings. Because Dan handled our running backs this year because I just – was too far behind. <laughs> Dan, Dan is professional <laughs> is able to do that for me. Let's see here where we're at, and I'll give you a couple of ideas about who I. Oh, of course, of course, we had to jump all the way back there because that's the way that my system's working, or more importantly, not working right now. Not too ten, you know. There we go. But the <laughs> maybe good? sort of. Oh yeah, okay, we're getting there. Now we're just staring at Joe Milton for no reason. That's fine. And it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to work. Okay, I'll I'll bring it back to that. But those are the two. The the last two that you mentioned, I think, are the ones that are going to be kind of an absolute fit. It's going to be one of those guys that, like has an attribute that the Chiefs like because they're. I think it's likely going to be day three. I don't think you can spend top one hundred on a ten end. I agree with you there. Do you think they won't do it at all, or do you, do you think they're happy with the four that they have? I think if they could convince Joe Milton to come play tight end, that he'd be drafted. <laughs> I think if they could convince him to do that, um, that he would. But no, it's the draft picks maybe with one of their fifth round picks. If they can get everything else figured out, then – because, again, I still think you need to draft two wide receivers. Next mm -hmm. season, 2025 season, they have, what, two guys under contract as on the team? Yeah. that That's like it. So I'm – I feel like you have to get two wide receivers and then an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman. And after that, you can start to play. But like I said earlier, I think the corner is higher on their list than people want to admit, myself. And that will put push tight end down. Now, if they trade down at an asset, like in the sixth or fifth round again, that will put it back on the board. But I think right now their their list of needs outweighs the, the tight end need that they the, the fans seemingly – Think that they need for after Travis Kelsey because I still think he plays two to three years. I, I do as well. I do as well. I, I don't think unless something unfortunate happens uh, injury wise, I think he's going to be there for a bit. Yeah. Now I don't want to zoom in too much on this because it's going to get a little blurry thanks to the screen. But these are your running back rankings, and they're not just Dan's running back rankings. They are film based plus athleticism plus production. That's how we work it all out, comes in the, in the algorithm. So no one analyst is responsible for our rankings. We do it as a group because we all contribute to it. Uh, that includes Jeff Porter. And if you guys have been checking out the Friday streams, make sure you keep doing that because Jeff has insight for outside the film range. You know, sometimes Dan and I, I I'll admit it, I fall in love with prospects. There's guys that I want. And sometimes I, I have to have that outside perspective that Jeff brings purely on statistics to kind mm -hmm. of be like, oh, hey, but there is a flaw here or there. That's how it approaches for me. Does it do the same for you? And if yeah, it does, that you have to have that. 
no, you're fine. I was like, that's, <laughs> I, I, I knew it's going to happen at some point. I've got a cup of coffee over here. Just, I just knew, knew it was going to happen, but uh, you have to have some analytical models. You can't just take everything and throw it away because you don't like it. Like that's, that's not how this works anymore. And I've become more familiar with analytics and uh, yes, there's going to be some guys that have red flags because of their number model, which makes perfect sense. Uh, that's always going to be for me. Trump card is going to be film. Okay. That's how it is. That's how I'm, if, if I like the film, if I see what I want on the film that that will usually for me, Trump it, but we can't just ignore some of the things that stats do tell us because a lot of times there's historical numbers and you can go back to 19 and you know, 1980 and or even before then, but you have a lot of statistical out, you have statistical outliers and you have like baseline this guy isn't very good if you don't have this statistical model okay well we're, we're we're kind of banking on this film being it right so you have to be able to understand that i could really like this player really like this player what he does does not mean that it's going to work out in the nfl so we always have to have everything at, at our access which is why ryan's saying we, we have the athletic matrix we have the stats we have some analytics and we have the film that gives you the full picture, okay? Obviously, if it all lines up, we're cooking with gas, right? There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if we're not, that's where you have to make those determinations. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's always going to be a gap. Uh, we don't get player interviews. We don't get to put them through the paces. Correct. Put them on the spot. And that, that kind of fit and mentality, those are the last pieces that really give you an idea of, is this guy exactly looking for? Um, now, I, I had the running backs up here, and I want to go back to it just because um, they, had, they had some interesting business besides Sweat today, yeah? Yeah, they did. They did. Jonathan Brooks, baby. Jonathan oh. Brooks. Where, where does he to happen be, to sit in this list? Hmm. He happens to be my RB1. Um, and that's <laughs> also with the injury stuff. I, I, I know that he's coming off of an injury, and he's got to go through that recovery process, but um, when I look at these, these backs, the all around game is, is 100% there with Jonathan Brooks. Now he's not going to be a AJ Dillon third and one thumper, even Isaiah Pacheco to an extent run somebody over, just put their shoulders down, which I'm totally okay with. Like I'm totally okay with just not taking a bunch of snaps off of your career by trying to get this third and one by any means necessary. Um, it's it's always nice to see though right like it's always nice to see yeah. that but he's got a ton in his bag in terms of the way he gets into space he he's his peripheral vision is fantastic he's immediately to he's immediately able to like feel defenders near him and he uses his hands in open space better than maybe any running back in this entire class. Just he's immediately all right stiff arm I'm going to go by you I'm going to move by you I'm going to use my arm to get by you He's got good vision. He's an excellent zone back too. Excellent zone. He feels back, uh, cut back lanes and everything. So he was interviewing with the Chiefs today, which, you know, that makes me happy. But also I'm like, oh, I really don't want them to spend a day two pick on a running back. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit bitter, right? All at the same time. And you can see here, folks, just how the interesting thing about this running back class in particular is how disparate it is. There's no one guy that is like the top in production and the top in film and the top in athletic makers. Everyone's a little bit of everywhere. Uh, you know, my my kind of flavor is a dude like Estime from Notre Dame, right? Because I do want that two yards in a cloud of dust, and I want to like pound somebody's face in and break face masks. That's what I want. That's okay. It's it's not going to happen in Kansas City, but it's okay that I like <laughs> that. And I have to keep telling yeah. myself that. That's the okay. way that it works. So we try to give you the best of both worlds. You can check that out at rogapc.com. Uh, get Dan's work and my work and EJ's work and Jeff's work. And we all put it together, and it is a hell of a lot of fun. Crystal, <clears throat> nice to see you. With uh, We saw a glimpse of what KT can do his first year with us. What is his ceiling if he stops the drops? I mean, that's that's the big question, right? Can he? I'm not sure. Are you? I don't think anyone knows. Um, I don't think anyone knows. And it's not even like a technique problem either. He attacked the ball in the air. He just is like, is it there yet? Is it there? I don't know. I can't feel it. Uh, apparently, that's what happens when he tries to catch the football. But, I mean, if he stops being a head case, honestly, I don't even know. Right now, I'm worried about the head case stuff. 
uh, posting to Instagram Live, saying the Chiefs are lying about you being injured. Okay, buddy. Like, we got to cut this stuff out. Completely cut it out. And and then we can work on everything else. I'm just I'm, – I'm baffled. I'm baffled. Man, I'm, I'll tell you, like that's to, to way to burn a second bridge. You'd you'd think you'd learn that in New York. See if he can pull it around. I'm glad he's in Dallas. He seems to be with Patrick um, and mm -hmm. the rest of the guy Hollywood in particular. Obviously, there's a whole lot of drama around. He's getting sued now. He turned himself. He's cooperating. He's trying to he's trying to make up for what he did wrong. In my opinion, um, don't know what it means longevity. So he might need KT. Is the problem? That's where we have to get try to get comfortable with anyway yeah thank you buddy christo and i know you got a few more we're coming right back to you des thank you pal thanks for the support uh which cbs in the draft are the best fit in casey i know i have my opinion do you have yours my number one fit is kool-aid mckinstry he is locked and loaded as the best fit in my opinion for kansas city he would rep he would be your Legere C replacement. He is going to play press man co uh, coverage. He is going to have long speed down the field. He has good change of direction. He's going to be a physical tackler, come downhill in the run game and support. Like, that's why I tweeted like a month ago, if the Chiefs aren't going tackle or wide receiver and they're still going to be taking a value, like a, a valued position at 32, if Kool-Aid is there, I would not be shocked if he was the pick. He, he, yeah. he is a perfect fit. Um, I haven't studied the entire class a lot, um, but he's the one guy that I'm like, you are a bona fide outside receiver in Steve's Spe or outside corner in Steve Spagnuolo's defense. I, I, I know it. I, I like where you're at. And I know that people are going to make the argument that Taryn Arnold's a better all around player. I think I would probably agree with that argument overall. Mm -hmm. But fit yeah. here, I really like what McKinstry does. I'm a Max Melton guy. I don't think you have to spend as much of a pick on him. He's got the turn and run. He's got the tenacity. Do I do I wish he had a little bit longer arm reach? Sure. Do I do I wish he played through the ball a little bit more? Sure. That's okay. But he's he's got all honestly, he's got as much as I could ask of Joshua Williams when he came to the roster. Knowing that Dave Merritt and C Spagnuolo there, I'm more than comfortable with where he's going to be. And and having a little bit more turn and burn to pair with McDuffie. I, I really like the concept of that because I don't think Joshua plays as fast as he times. And I don't think uh, Jalen Watson times or plays as, as fast as he times. So th there is a little bit of that, like you got to turn and stay on somebody down the field when they throw everything at you. And, and so I do like that. Um, I'm just trying to look down the list, see if there's anybody else. Anybody else stand out to you? I mean, if they want to keep Trent McDuffie on the outside permanently, bring Mike Sandra still in here and you can be mm -hmm. slot safety kind of guy. Like he's 100%. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he is going to hit someone like he's the biggest guy out there. And that's without fail. He is very instinctive. He reads extremely well. He knows how to play receivers because he's an ex receiver. He transferred, uh, he switched positions from Mich at Michigan to, from wide receiver to cornerback. And he uses everything that he learned as a wide receiver in his tool bag as a corner. So you can see how he mirrors very, very well. He stays with guys in the short area. So he's a bit, he, like I said, he's a smaller guy. He's pretty much a, like a box safety slot kind of player, but very, very, uh, very, very fun. I think TJ Tampa is another outside cornerback as well, who would be a physical turn and run kind of player in, in this defense that I see think Steve Spagnuolo and never, and, never, and then others would, would like as well. I, I think a guy that's being slept on quite heavily is Kyrie Jackson from Oregon. Um, I like his yeah, game. He didn't yeah. have it the last season that he had the year before. That's okay. I, again, I, the guy can grow into it. Who else? Uh, Cam Hart, Ryan Watts, uh, a late day two guy and a late day three guy for me in both cases. I know you had Cam in the top 50 because maybe I'm just talking out my ear and they won't even have a shot at him. Who? Cam Hart. Oh yeah, I, I I like I do like Cam Hart quite a bit, but I I think he's going to end up being being taken before. But you never know; it's the draft, man. You you never really know. And let, one more shout out to a guy that I just watched the other night, um, Renardo Green. Um, yes, give, give me yes. give me some fight and some battle. I'm I'm here for it. Uh, there's a couple of guys. 
Uh, and I'm still working my way through the corners and the classes that I didn't do the primary evaluation on. So still working through that. And we'll give you some more insight as we get back to it. So thank you, buddy. Um, let's see. Steve, what players from the Chiefs uh, local scout day uh, might be good undrafted college free agents? There's a number of them. I was actually surprised guys like uh, Cooper BB were in the room, but it worked. I don't, um, I didn't, I honestly didn't see very many of them. I'll be honest, guys. That's a, that's a miss. I, that's a miss on me. Um, probably my favorite was Kenny Logan from KU. Um, I, I don't think he's going to get drafted. But I do think he can be a roster. So, um, looking forward to him. There was, uh, who was the Mizzou guy that I always, I always mess up his name. I mean, I know that's not very uncommon folks. Sorry. Bear with me. But, <laughs> um, I'm going to look it up just to make sure. And we'll come back to you one more time when we get there. I, I appreciate it, Steve. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you got a couple here. We're going to take care of those. Thoughts on Andrew Phillips from Kentucky in the third as our slot starter. It's a little rich for me, in, in my personal opinion. Um, but I do think that he's a guy that fits the mold. Uh, let's see, where do we have him? We have him firmly in that range that you could yeah. see still squeezing the top 100. Uh, I think you might have a shot in the fourth as well. I don't know. Do you have a feel for that? I do think that you'd have to get him in the third round. I think that he's going to be one. If he doesn't go, he's going to be one of those first corners or first players that goes off in the beginning of the fourth round. Teams come up and get someone like that, kind of like the, we saw the Eagles do last year with, uh, I forget his name, but the athletic uh, corner out of Georgia. That's what they kind of did last year, just take a bunch of Georgia players. Uh, but Andrew Phillips, again, he, he's a little bit, he's a little small. He's under six foot, 190 pounds. And. I'm just I'm just looking at, at you know EJ's report right now, and he does seem to fit what the Chiefs want in terms of he's going to be a, a bit physical. He's athletic. He's got deep speed. He can play inside. He can play outside. The Chiefs really like that positional flexibility, obviously, with the Jerry Sneed, Trent McDuffie, the ability to do both things. Carries a lot of weight with them the same way it does just about everywhere. So he also, not much ball production, so he fit right into Kansas City. <laughs> Also very classic in terms of the guys that they do put in there. Nazi, Nick Jones, little undersized yeah. needs to build some strength there. So that is part of the equation that they do go to. Um, just to take a look at it, you guys, here is the list I wanted to go back through. Um, really, really proud uh, to be a Jayhawk this year because there's a lot of Jayhawks <laughs> who got at least invited to this. Not something you typically see is, is the mm -hmm. third power in the, in the region, right? Um, Booker's going to be a draft pick. I, I think he's going to be on day three pretty solidly, pretty high. Um, I, I bet he goes before the end of the fifth round, no matter what. Uh, I do like that. Um, let's see who else. Cooper Beebe obviously is going to be selected well before that. I do like Lee Duke. I think he makes a roster. I like Elam. I like Mason Fairchild. Um, Javon Foster will make a roster. I don't know that he's going to be a UDFA. Ty Hopper is one of the most athletic linebackers in this class, and I do think he gets drafted probably uh, higher than the fifth round. I, I think somebody's going to take a, a shot at him. It was uh, it was uh, Quentin Lasser, Kwame's uh, younger brother. Uh, he's one of the guys that I do want to see make a roster. Cody Schrader's in here. He'll get drafted. I don't see any problem with yeah. that. Anybody else stand out to you? No, I actually think Javon Foster is going to be like a day two pick, personally. Um, it wouldn't, wouldn't yeah, shock me at all. So. And, uh, yeah, he's the only guy I think the Chiefs would be interested in drafting, especially if they can get him to play right tackle. and you know, move Juwan Taylor to left tackle if that's their plan. Or, you know, if it just, it just depends who they're going to be able to, to move around here. Yeah, I'm with you. I saw the Ravens. Who's the best competition for KC? And who would you rank uh, the West right now? Right now. <sighs> Jim Harbaugh, I, I, can I trust anything out there? I don't know, man. Like, would you put them too? No, I wouldn't put them too. I, no. I think that this year is going to be a quite a bit of a step back, personally. Um, but you never know. Like I, I, I just don't know what to expect out of Jim Harbaugh outside of him running the ball five hundred times um, a season. So I actually weirdly would put the Raiders at two because I believe hmm. in the philosophy of what the Raiders are building. I don't think that their quarterback's that. very good, um, but I, I obviously. Justin Herbert's the second best quarterback in, in the division, but what's he done? 
And, and what are they going to do? I, I don't know. I have no, they have no wide receivers. Like they've got nope. nothing. So I, I think just based off of pure vibes, I would go, obviously it would go Raiders, then Chargers, and then the Broncos. My, my only consolation is that if, and, and folks go check out NFL 33, if you want to understand what, what I'm getting at here, because uh, <laughs> very popular quarterback is not in my top five for this reason but if he turns justin herbert into jj mccarthy is that efficiency that herbert already has built in with his experience in the league does that make it more potent to you or, or is it just arrive at the same thing of just slogging through and waiting for a, a big run play to happen the way that harbaugh's did in the last couple of years he's going to turn them into the Ravens like that's what he's going to want to do like what Michigan does uh, or the 49ers like I I don't see it working out I just don't because I I think that I legitimately think that Harbaugh is one of the most overrated coaches and I, this is coming from a Michigan fan I could not stand <laughs> watching them play football it was ugly it was not fun this is we win baby like that's what this is that's what Harbaugh is going to say we just win games like I yeah. I don't think that model fits right now in this NFL, but we're going to find out. It's a hard way or not. I agree with you. Yeah. Thank you, Daryl. Thanks for being Thank you, here. Thanks for supporting us forever. We very much appreciate you, buddy. We couldn't do it without you guys. We love you. Uh, I see uh, people are saying cut price just based off of history. I feel like EC would have already done that. That was absolutely, they're not going to cut Rishi Rice. Um, especially given the transparency that's come after the fact. If he were yeah. being sneaky and, and dodging responsibility, that might be a different scenario. Um, it was it was reckless and it was irresponsible and it was a problem with the people around him as much as it is with himself. Yeah, they will work with him to figure that out. Rashid Rice isn't going anywhere. I guarantee you. Um, ruthless. My draft comparison today is what's the similarities between Kulik and McKittry, uh, McKittry and Chavarius Ward? Um, neither of them see very well. Um, I feel like Goulet can turn a little bit better. Do you? Yeah, he's got a much better short area quickness. I think he's kind of faster than Traverse Ward, too. I think Traverse was a 4 6 guy, if I'm not mistaken, but you're 4 5 ish. I think that Kool Aid's faster. And even on a hurt foot, he was able to run faster than 4 5 in his uh, pro day. So that, that, that does tell you he's. Uh, a bit a little bit better in that area but that's not a bad comp except the fact that i do think that kool-aid is going to be a bit stickier in man coverage than uh Traverius ward is uh more physical definitely uh i have to go back and look at the arm like that would be my next my last my last maybe piece. i think Traverius was more is more physical in the run game though i think he's a better tackler uh, overall fair point fair point uh Des, thank you buddy that's number two from you appreciate the support as thank always. you Des. Uh, I think Williams is more similar to Kyler, just taller, or Russell than Mahomes. What do you see? <clears throat> That's a very good point. I don't see Kyler because I, I, only because, like in terms of the compactness and the way that he runs it and how he takes contact, I see what you're saying, Des. But the fact that he's still able to put the ball anywhere, I think Kyler's range tunnels as he runs. I don't think he's as aware in the periphery. I don't think he can make throws across the field. Well, I do think Caleb can. Am I wrong, Dan? No, you're absolutely right. It, it's a half field when Kyler moves out. He's got a really good arm, but it's it's not as strong to the opposite side of the field. He can still deliver the ball down the field. Like He can still deliver it down, down the field. He has a really strong arm. But the mechanics of throwing it across your body versus – throwing it down the field when you're on your move are completely different. You have to have a bit, I guess, you have to have better hips. You have to have a little bit longer stride to be able to generate some more force. And Caleb has that and the ability to do that. And he has the, uh, the better arm and shoulder mechanics than Kyler does going across his body the opposite way. So that's why he's getting those comps. Obviously, that's not how we view anybody because Patrick Mahomes is one of one. And we're just, I'm never going to compare anybody to Patrick Mahomes ever. I'm just not going to do it. And just like I wasn't comparing people to Aaron Rodgers uh, before, like it, it just don't do it. Like just don't put those <laughs> expectations on young players. Just don't do it. It'll make you look silly. 90% of the time, 99% <laughs> exactly. of the time. That's just, oh. As far as Russell, um, Russell's uh, my big qualm. I, I see what you mean there in terms of the compactness and the way that they can carry the ball high when they're trying to deliver it on the run. Um, but the, the, 
short area quickness, the ability to change direction is vastly better with Caleb Williams than it was ever with Russell yeah. Wilson. Um, but I, I, I see it definitely. I don't see Patrick. You're right. Dad. So I think we're both hundred percent with you on that one. Thanks buddy. And appreciate you bringing that up. Um, Dustin. Wow. Eight months and most of those were free. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Glad that you're here. And thank you to Minotaur and all of our members. That Absolutely. Gift the membership. If you guys have been on the receiving end of that, I hope that you're enjoying it. If you want to upgrade and get the behind the scenes stuff, go to the rookie level. You get in the discord, you get all that. Um, and that's, I think, the off-season, off-off-season, you know, both weeks of it. We're, we're going to try to do some cool stuff over in the Discord as well. So thanks, don't, Justin. Nice to see you. Don't make me sad saying <laughs> both weeks of it. <laughs> Chief Belief, been here for three and a half years. You that's, man. Oh. That's nice. I love it. Love the show and always enjoy the content. Want to remind the others to trust in Veach is all. I, I like your point of view. He's done a ton, and, and we appreciate you supporting us. We'll support him in return. Um, no one's 100%. There is no such thing as a perfect GM. But he has done an admirable job. And he, when I say he, I mean his entire staff. We, we're not going to get away from thanking everyone yeah. else under uh, under the, the umbrella as well. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you, Belief. Uh, Alex, <clears throat> what is the receiving core looking like for next year, assuming that they draft and sign another who gets cut? Watson, Tony, or... It would go in that order, in my opinion. It would be Ross, Tony, Watson. Or it would be the options. Um, I don't know if I saw enough from Ross to stick on the roster this year. No, I'm with you. You have to show a little bit more. And, again, he was used in, like, special packages. That's not a player that's going to make another roster unless you drastically get better. So the first person to go is going to be Justin Ross if they, again, they're going to be drafting a receiver. He was already the seventh. There's no room for error now. Like, yeah, they're, they're not going to cut and honestly, anybody else. <laughs> and, and even in the sixth edition, or me, who's going to be back, he showed enough return capability to take some pressure off the other guys. Like, you, you got to fit into the puzzle. Um, I believe right now they scope Watson in as one of their starters, along with with she and Hollywood. Obviously, yeah, she's I'm, the ability to change that. But. Yeah, I'm with you. Hey Dan, the tattoo uh, looking nowadays. How is that? It's looking, it's looking good, man. Still looking good. You can still you see everything. Go. Like it's a hundred percent. Um, and I'm gonna get more added on down here in June. So I got the tattoo appointment set up. We're gonna keep going down here. Yeah, looking nice. good. Thanks for the. Thanks for wondering. Yeah. Hey, well done. I totally forgot about it, sir. I've been looking at this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think the police can get for our playbook? Just kidding. But yikes. Um, I, if he had the playbook down there in his car, I hope that's the first thing that he had. That's all I'm going to tell. You. No promise. I'm with you, James. It seems like everybody thinks Chief should draft an offensive tackle and wide receiver in the first and second round. Could they go a different position in first or second? Absolutely. In the end, they're going to stick with their grades. They need defensive line help, as Dan pointed out. They still need a corner. They still do. Are they Are they going to go running back? They're going to go tight end in the first or second. Probably not. But you don't lose when you invest in the trenches. I think multiple franchises set that as kind of one of their primary parameters. Mm -hmm. And right now, a quarterback on tap, if you can't get a weapon, the trenches are the way to go. Just throw, continue to throw big bodies at it that you can roll out there and find a position for. So Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised. Fisk, like you said, probably early day three now. Maybe the tail end. If he's there at 95, they could pull the trigger. That's decent value. We'll see. Um, other guys that I liked. Um, did you see Murphy? Uh, North Carolina? The, oh, yes. A little bit. Yeah, I, I got to see him a little bit. Yeah. I didn't do a great on him, but I, I got him in passing. Um, yeah, okay. Little one tech. He, looks, I, he could pull something off. Like I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, where, where is my guy here? Like he's Dwayne Carter's my tackle two in this class. And I think you might be able to get him in the third round, maybe not at 95, but you'd have to trade up a little bit for him. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of him. I also love Michael Hall Jr. I don't know what I'm, I'm hearing. A lot of people say that he's not very good against the run. I did not see that at all. I didn't see I didn't. that at all. I saw a guy who maybe struggles a little bit with, getting displaced against doubles. doubles 
Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> like doubles, he gets displaced. But if he's in the run game, he's a quick penetrator. He has legitimate strength in his extension. And he's young. He's turning 21, I think, in June. This is the guy who's I, ascending as a pass rusher as well. Like, I'm a big fan of Michael Hall. I think he's extremely underrated in this draft class. I I called him an upgrade, but same vein as Dana. Yeah. I think he can play inside. I think he can play outside. He's explosive. I like it. Appreciate you, James. Thank you. Thank Jesus, you. nice to see Jesus. you, and thanks for the support, pal. What player 32 would you be most excited for? I mean, Joe Alt. <laughs> but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> at, at 32. All hmm. right. I, I think for me, I'd be most excited for – Oh, that's a tough – that's actually a really tough question because I don't know how who's going to fall that far. But I'd be extremely excited for Xavier Worthy. Um, I love I love Worthy a lot, and I, I don't think he's going to be – I don't think he has a first-round grade for anybody, but, again, you're at 32. Um, I'd be excited for that. Kingsley Sua, uh, Sua Matea, I, I'd like – I'd be excited for that. Um, any one of the, like, tackles, if they ended up falling, I would be pretty excited for personally. But uh, I don't know. What about you, Adam? Yeah, uh, I would, I would, I would run around this office if Marius Mims was there at thirty-two. I would. Run, he's my. Just to give you guys a little heads up, I have my top five tackles that drop on Tuesday at, at NFL33.com. He is my fifth grade at tackle in this class. So, um, yeah, I would love it if he was there. And I think we're of the same point of view. We we don't care if it's the right tackle. Moving no. Jawan, we're both comfortable with. That's fine. So upgrade, get your tackle tandem better. We're good with that. Um, guys that, that I think could be there. Uh, you know, I'd like what you said about Mims. Um, I, it sounds like according to a couple of folks that I know, not that I'm talking to teams interiors right now, because most of my, most of my guys are in war rooms right now. They're not talking to me, but folks that I know that do have some of those contacts, it does feel like Washington's tackle Faltano is falling a little bit or, we in the outside media pushed him up higher than the teams ever had him. So if he's um, a mid twenties guy and spots and get him, or God forbid he fell to 32, I would be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. He's probably my favorite tackle to watch. Is, is he have like, you know, is he maxed out in, in every area against some of the others? No, I don't know that you call him the best at anything other than maybe his kick step in this class. Um, but I love the way that he plays, and, and you're pretty high on him as well, right? Yeah, I actually just moved him in my in my rankings up a little bit, where you guys will again see that on NFL 33. But he's he's just so fun. He's so he's so good, and I think his biggest problem is just oversetting. He he's so quick to get to his spot. Sometimes he's just there too quick, and guys are like, "Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the B gap. Uh, I'll I'll see you later." Um, so like the, it's something that, the things that are coachable. And he has the length. He has the power. Like he has those things. So I'm. I would. Oh, that would be so so great. He's such a fun player, and it would be a lot of fun to see him in a, a team where again he could play zone. He, he's doesn't have to play gap power or zones, but he can do all of it. And, and I think that he's a very smooth player. So I'd be ecstatic there too. Hey, let, let's let's cross our fingers. We can always hope, right? But that's yeah, exactly. that's where we're at tonight, Jesus. Ask me in a week. We'll see where yeah, we right, are. Exactly. Tonight. Well, <laughs> Thanks, Kev. Nice to see you. Thoughts on Jonah Ellis, Jared versus and Braylon Trice. Um, I like all three of them. Have you have you done film on any of these guys yet? I've seen I've seen these guys. Yeah. Okay. I think Jared versus overrated. I don't think he's a top ten pick. Well, I don't think anyone don't think thinks he's a top ten pick. I keep I keep seeing that the last few days, like people pushing him in the top ten, and I I just don't see nah. it. Nah. Um. Dallas is a better athlete, and Latu is a better pass rusher. That's just – that's the basis. He's number three for me. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to put him above either of them. Um, the other thing that I keep hearing from people is that Chop Robinson is a guy that can fit Kansas City, and I say no way in hell. He that is like outside linebacker. D Ford light, guys. That's D yeah, Ford light. Yeah. He can't play against the run. Like, he, he cannot. No. He is – he wanted to know something crazy. He had 17 tackles last year. He only had 17 tackles. Yeah. 
He is a first step pass rusher that has fine hands, but zero speed to power. And if he doesn't win based off of that, he's got nothing. He, he's toast. He's done. He is a he designated pass rusher. No, he is a yeah, designated pass rusher. No thanks. <laughs> he he's not even as strong as Will McDonald was. And if you guys heard us in our run up to that, like it's even more dramatic this way. Uh, Jonah Ellis is a day three guy that I do think has some upside, and I do think he has some push to him. He's a bull rusher, but he, I think he can run, refine some things. I love Braylon Trice because I think he's got a little bit of everything, and he's a master of none, and he's the kind of guy that Steve Spagnuolo could could mold. I think he's a day two guy, probably late, mm-hmm. maybe an option at 95. The Spags would bring in, and I think he'd be get, be able to, to unleash him a little bit. I like that concept. Uh, do you have thought on him? No, Trice is, is like a legitimate – Steve Spagnuolo guy. I see him kind of like maybe a souped up version of Mike Dana, a guy who's going to be able to effort, give you power. I think he's got more bend. I think he's a bit better athlete. So a little bit of, you know, Mike Dana plus gives you a little more upside as a, as a pick. I'm, I'm much higher on Jared Verse than you are. Um, I think he's as good of an athlete as Dallas, as Dallas Turner is personally. I think Turner is overrated mm-hmm. athlete. Um, I think his testing was, is not, does not show up as much on tape. And I loved, yeah. uh, the first step speed to power that Jared verse offers with his, his hand power and his hand usage. But I understand where you're coming from. Like it's not, I still think Florida state does a pretty bad job developing their players. Like they they, they just, they get these athletes and they're like, Hey, just go be an athlete. We're not going to teach you anything. It's still bad. So they were good last year because they have a lot of really good athletes and good players, but they don't develop them. So I think that Jared verse, is going to be the best pass rusher that comes out of this class, but it really does depend on where he falls development wise. Uh, because it would, yeah. again, wouldn't surprise me if Turner was. I'm a little worried about Latu. I love him as a pass rusher. I am worried about the injury stuff. Um, and I, I don't think he's that good against the run. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't think he's very good. So he's bordering on a designated pass rusher type player for me. And someone's going to take him in the first round. And I'm just like, I don't know if I do that with the retirement past and he might just be a designated pass rusher and i love his pass rush he's a fan he's the, probably the most well-rounded studied player in this entire draft he studies like a quarterback he knows yeah. everything that that tackle is going to do and then he understands how to beat him when he brings a counter like it's incredible but it's it's third down it's pass rush so I, i'm a little worried about that I, I see your point about against the run. You're absolutely right. And in the Pac-12, you, you don't have to, you know, get in there and maul very much. <laughs> not to do much. From what I understand, though, his strength has recovered uh, pretty steadily since uh, the unretirement. So if he can continue that's that, good. That, good. Um, he's got he's got the technical ability of Von Miller. I got to tell you, that's how good his yeah. hands are. He can they're do so, anything, so any technique you want. If he can gain strength and develop. The ability to deliver some of that power, I, I think he could get there. So that's just my thoughts. I'm not it. Yeah. The problem with verse, uh, he's stiff. He doesn't have a, a counter that it's consistent. And when you cannot get to the edge of the tackle, you have to have a counter. That's why I think he, you might be, absolutely be right. He may end up being the best of them, but it's going to take him longer. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, I'm not. You just I'm got not, you yeah. just got to know when you build it into your plan, right? <laughs> right. Uh, if the Texans and Bengals had an awesome draft, could it put them over the top. And they go to the Super Bowl. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> so look, I mean, let's be very honest where we are right now. The Texans, I love CJ Stroud. He looked lost against the Ravens defense. Looked lost. <laughs> lost. And you want to know who's an excellent game manager or game planner in the postseason? The best game planner in the postseason? Steve Spagnuolo, he's going to have that dude seeing ghosts. Um, And Joe Burrow has not actually played well in the postseason. He has not done it. It, The the Chiefs just lost the games in the post, the the, the game in the postseason against them. They they lost it. That was not the Bengals winning. It was the Chiefs losing that football game. So I think that the Bengals are going to be taking a step back. Their defense is going to continue to get worse. It was bad last year. I think it's going to get worse. And their offensive line is going through some problems as well. I, They can only do so much. Texans, I think, are going to be better than the Bengals next year. I'll be honest. 
But I, I think the inexperience in that postseason is going to be what does it. But at the end of the day, you're, you're you're playing Patrick Mahomes now, coming off two Super Bowls. You think you're going to be able to just you know line up against him and, and beat that kind of confidence? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Um, that's who I, I do believe. Um, Texans could be in for a little bit of a step back, a uh, sophomore slump, just just a bit. I don't think it's going to be dramatic, but I, I don't think we can just push them straight through either. So, Metal, nice to see you. Um, what are your thoughts in Casey drafting uh, Leggett, Purcell, uh, Javon Baker for the wide receivers in this year's draft? Uh, all three of them? Um, you'd have to do all of that on day two, and I don't see that happening. Um, I would take Pearsall over Leggett myself. I know you disagree with me, Dan, because I'm looking for something different than, than his explosiveness vertically or horizontal. I guess it just depends on what, like, exactly what position you're looking for. Like, if I'm looking for a slot guy that's going to just and even on the outside i think pierce all can play uh, i think he's going to be more of a short to intermediate player in the nfl i don't think his his deep stuff is going to translate to the nfl personally i i don't see that happening but we'll find out like it's, it's hard to know and even a guy like um puka nakua short to intermediate he, he was basically a a dig winner he, he was an intermediate of the field yep, yep. just team open i think that that could be ricky pierce uh place too so Depends on what you're looking for. I, I personally think they need a deep, a deep player. I, I don't think they have one right now outside of Hollywood Brown. And Hollywood Brown's a one year in Kansas City person. And then they got nobody else. I, I, I'm looking for that type of player. And I think Leggett offers that myself. Um, so it does depend on what the Chiefs are looking for. Um, but all of these guys fit. I'm going to be breaking down Javon Baker on Wednesday. So you get my thoughts on him. But it, this that, that, that's going to be a fun one for you guys. I, I can promise you that one. There's a lot to like about a uh, Javon Baker. But if you're looking for that deep threat, I, I think it's it's Leggett. Per, uh, but again, who knows? No, I, I would I would agree with you. That's probably his best role. I'm looking for that underneath dig winner. I, I want the quick game to evolve, and I, and I think Purcell is the guy to do that. And I, yeah. he he lets Rashid evolve into what he can be outside as well. So. That's that's just me. And metal, you tied into David's perfect. Is Xavier worthy worth a first round pick? He's not going to be on either of our boards as a first rounder, but he might be the best available player at thirty two. Yeah, and that's that. That's it. Like you, I'm not going to have thirty two first round picks. I don't. I'm not going to have that many grades. I'm just not going to. Uh, most teams aren't going to either. There's there's just rare occasions where thirty two players grade out as first round picks. So at thirty two, you're saying. Where do we have this player? How high do we think he can get? Where do we believe he can develop to? And that's what you're drafting at 32. Absolutely. I'm 100% with you. Uh, Justin, <clears throat> how much do you think the police... Uh, okay, that's the second one. I must have already read that <laughs> one because it was funny the second time. Thanks, Justin. Um, Scott, <laughs> bluntly honest, uh, can Morris actually do a great job at LT? Or are we hoping that he will make it just like we hoped Sky would make it? I think Wanye showed more promise than Sky did in his rookie season. Um, but it is projection. He does have ways to go. He's not a finished product uh, ready to be a starting tackle yet, in my opinion. Uh, do you disagree? No, I, I don't disagree, but we have to hope for development, right? We, we have to project it because we don't get to see it. The Chiefs know much more about his progress as a player right now than we do. We don't get that information. We have what he did last year and the fact that he was not the starter when Donovan Smith came back. Yes, he took that injury, but when he got healthy, it was Donovan Smith as the starter. So as of right now, the Chiefs don't have their quote-unquote starter at left tackle. It's a guy they drafted, but he was a spot starter. He was not the starter. Um, so that's what we have to work with right now. Um, so we have to hope development's there. And Andy Heck is a lot different uh, position coach than what the Chiefs were working with last year at wide receiver coach. Um which also changed. We not forget that, right? Sky Moore dealt with a different wide receiver coach his first year than he did his second year. Um, so that also might have played into why the development wasn't there. Because I will tell you, I have spoken with Bobby Strope about Sky Moore. He has very different opinions than 95% of the public about Sky Moore. So there is, might be a little bit of tension that we don't know about or just maybe not working well with what he's being asked to do. And again, 
played as an outside receiver last year for most of the time. It didn't make sense then. It doesn't make sense now. Makes sense. Please stop it. <laughs> you your teeth with the best of them, dude. I love it. Oh, <laughs> hey, Gary. Hope you're doing well. Everybody give Gary a hand. He's one of our moderators. Takes care of business around here. Um, Chiefs need to draft Leggett with 32 and Kingsley with 64. Um, I disagree on Leggett that he is not first-round talent in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion. He's a fully unmature product on my board. If you flip them, I'd be more likely to, to take it. But I think Kingsley goes on day two as well. What do you think, Dan? If you want this, you have to flip them because I believe that Kingsley is going to be far closer to the 32nd pick in the draft than Leggett is. I believe right now, I think Leggett's going to be probably falling down, might be available in the 50s and 60s. Like I, I would imagine that teams are going to be like, yeah, but he's got one year of production, which I totally, totally get, by the way. I get it. I, I think he's going to be a good player, but you have to understand he's pretty much done nothing up until this past year. So we have to take what he's done with a grain of salt, right? So, for me, I'm, pl I'm if I if you if you told me right now you flip this and the Chiefs end up with him at 32 and Leggett at 64, I am going to maybe cry happy tears on stream. That would be a fantastic <laughs> start for me personally. <laughs> help me, help me, dude, because I've been doing this a thousand ways. Sua Mataia, yeah, I believe that's. I, I think it's how it is. Sua Sua Mataia. I've been condensing it a lot because people like, make Sua it Mataya, me. Like I, I've said that during my, <laughs> right. my breakdown, but I do believe it's Sua Mataya. Okay. So right. It's a hard we'll eat. It as soon as he's a chief, we'll get it, folks. I promise you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll hear it once and we'll be good. <laughs> right. Uh, James, should the Chiefs try and fix Kaylee King, uh, the DB from Penn State, uh, on day three? Absolutely. Why not? Is it any more risky than Joshua Williams or, or Galen Watson? Look what they do with them. Heck no, I that a shot. I, I'll take that all day long. I, I'd rather have the other corner out of, out of, out of Penn State. Give oh, me well, that too. I, was, <laughs> didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, give me Johnny uh, Dixon. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, what are the pros and the cons if taking Patrick Paul at 64? You guys always do a great job. Thanks, Napoleon. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, the pros are his feet. Um, the cons are, Dan, you tell me if wrong. You probably did more games on him than I did. I just glanced at two. Anchor and, and power, right? Just about everything. Um, <laughs> okay. He's a work in progress. This is, again, you're you're taking basically like a guy like Wanya Morris around earlier in Patrick Paul. He is, he is not ready to start. He's not, in my opinion. He cannot come in and play right now. So in your – Game plan, you have to be like Donovan Smith. Come on back and start if you don't think Wanya Morris is it. And if you don't think Patrick Paul is going to play, you have to have a plan to draft him, one, that high, just to draft him at all because he's not he's not playing year one. I don't think it's possible for him to. He, he does not understand the fundamentals of pass protection right now, in my opinion. You can beat him every any which way from like around the arc, inside, and he sometimes will get on the drive block and he'll be able to get get moving, but he falls off blocks. He, he doesn't extend in the second level. He can't stay connected to those blocks. He's very, very, very raw. And he's a great athlete. And he's got length. He's got size. He's got mm -hmm. all you want, traits based. But that's what it is. Right? That's what he is right now. He's traits based. He's, he's clay. You, you have to build him. You got to him. Yes, I, I, I would not. I would not take him at sixty four. I can take him at ninety five. No. Yes, um, but I, um, for sure. Yeah. Thanks, Napoleon. Adam, are you going to do film on the Chiefs draft picks? Every last one of them. We do you every can single guarantee year. it. Yep, not going to be a problem. And I, I feel like for most of the of the guys, there's still one that I'm still pissed off that I haven't been able to find actual film on. I'm still working on that. Uh, I am halfway through the Yale tackle, and folks, I got to tell go. you. Most people are being very nice. I'm I'm not seeing I'm not seeing second round upside that a lot of people seem to claim. That's that's not what I'm seeing on tape. A lot of potential, absolutely. Um, but a lot of patty cake on that film, too. Do not watch the Dartmouth film. You might cry. I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> uh, but yes, we will do film on every draft pick. Uh, unless they're just, you know, 
from Botswana or somewhere that we can't get film from. Um, forgot the question marks. Thanks, Hunter. That it certainly does help. I can't find them otherwise. Uh, could Trey or Joe be uh, a surprise draft day uh, up move for a tackle with the guard uh, market blowing up recently? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't want to stomp your thoughts on it, Dan. What would you think? Um, I don't. I don't think it makes sense to trade either of them right now. Um, I think Trey Smith, the best situation you could hope for is that you get a comp pick for him at equal value to what you would get in a trade. That's what I think. And that would be after this season. So I, I understand the thought process. If you think Wanya Morris can come in right now and play right guard. Okay, fine. Go for it. You try and maneuver that way. You go up and get another tackle or, or someone like that to play, but it's, a projection again I, I don't know what he's doing i don't know what he's being asked to do um but i think excuse me i think that joe tooney is going to be here for maybe his career that's what i think yeah. right now um that would be the mid that would make the most sense to me and i think trey would be more of a comp pick guy that's again my opinion yeah um i i don't think you're going to get a trade off for joe just because of his age i don't think you're going to get a trade off for trey because of his pending contract and I will say this, I think the pay market, the the financial market for guards is a whole lot higher than the trade market is for guards. There you go. That's um, a better that's a better way to say it. it. It just is what it is. But Hunter, if it had to be a package and you, and you had to do something, if you don't think you can sign Trey Smith, it, it could be on the table. I don't think it is, but there have been crazier things happen. So um, guys, would you hit the like for us? We're, we're running behind. Sure. Adam, thank you for making that. We very much appreciate that. And Adam, thank you for reminding me. Um, we do have a few more. Then we're going to get Dan out of here almost on time. Um, almost. Generally do. Um, we're we're, we're doing a good than job. Than <clears throat> yeah. Um, I have I, ha I have Mims higher than Kingsley. Kingsley's still, again, playing at BYU. You're not getting the most development. Again, he played right. Then he played left. So, situationally he didn't have time to grow as a right tackle didn't have time to grow as a left tackle you're learning two different positions he redshirted as a, as a freshman at oregon and then immediately started at right tackle for byu then started left tackle for byu the year later so there's not consistency in his development plan but he's athletic again he has the traits the size the length and he plays and honestly they added more counter and power concepts to their mm -hmm. to byu's offense last year so he's a good puller and he's a good zone blocker that's the key here i don't think he's a displaced vertically kind of guy like that's not his game if you want him to come in and displace guys vertically off the snap you're probably not going to get what you want but if you want someone that's going to finish drive blocks get in space and run guys over again you guys go back and watch the kids <laughs> yes, Sua, Sua Mataia film review that i did on wednesday you see him just demolishing a guy in the second level when he's on a puller. Um, I think that's why I, I have him as high as I do, and I would take him in the first round. Mims could legitimately turn into the best tackle from this class, but he there's could. just no experience. He's got, what, seven games played in his career? There's just not he much there. He could get there. hurt again and never play again as well. Exactly. And I think that Mary this is, is what the I wanted best to pull out. pass protector in the class. And look at this right here. We and, have production. This is, <laughs> this is what says it. Yes, he missed a lot of games. He didn't play a ton. He doesn't have the most snap counts. But that's why we do clean pocket production based on percentage of how much pressure you give up. That's why this is important because you can take a guy who played eight games last year and compare him to somebody who played 14 games and get yeah. a feel for it. Better than Joe Alt in terms of keeping guys off of your quarterback. That's the thing. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Um, and a uh, shout out to another guy in here. You guys can get this in the draft guide at rogueapc.com. Please, please use the code RGR. Just RGR, don't forget please. to do that. Because I feel guilty at night when y'all buy stuff and don't use the discount. Code. <laughs> so please. Um, but it's it's all over there. And this this is just one of the graphics. Another guy to shout out here that is. I think being undervalued right now that the Chiefs probably know better than most of the media do is Roger Rosengard for exactly this reason as well. He had a bad championship game, guys. That's it. Yeah, that's it. But one bad game. 
I did. I was like tweeting about him. People like, well, watch the Michigan game. I'm like, okay, you want one game out of his entire career? Okay, you got me. You got me. He had a bad game. It was bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> it happens to everybody. He's a college kid. He'll recover. He'll be a great professional. I, I'm, I'm positive of that. Um, Montavious, well, nice to see you. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Thanks. I'm enjoying. Glad you're enjoying the content. Uh, Chief Dad Brooks in from Texas today for a 30 visit. What do you think about him? Uh, late getting here, so I'm sorry. We kind of covered it. But just to let Dan let the joy out, we can talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, he's my RB1, and Tavius, he's my RB1. And this is a styles make fights and you pick your kind of flavor, choose your own adventure running back class. It, not, not one team is going to have the same rank, rankings. Not one person that does this for a living is going to have the same rankings as everybody else. It's very different. And, and Brooks is my RB1 because he is a – Ready NFL pass protector. 1,000% can come in and be a pass protector. He can do that right now. I have zero questions about that. Good pass catcher. Good vision. Excellent zone runner, but he he's multifaceted. He can do all those things. He's not. He's more of a finesse player. He is. He has some indecision at times, but... And you could probably argue that he's not the pull-away running back that Isaiah Pacheco is. I don't care. Mm. Like he doesn't... I don't think he has that third or fourth gear to just pull away from guys. He's got good burst. He can get to the next level. And that's when he starts making guys miss. So he's a, a really fun player that people will liken to Jamal Charles, but it's not the same thing, guys. He's not the same player. Don't put that on Jonathan Brooks. He's a tier down um, from a guy like Jamal Charles. He doesn't have the speed, the quickness. It's not the same. He is smooth. Yeah. That the the best compliment I can pay him is that he is the smoothest runner in this class. He makes it look effortless. He is in and out, and it, it doesn't he doesn't waste movement. He's so efficient with his movements. That's what I love about him. I mean, you guys got to remember, Jamal was a, a track athlete, unicorn before, before Tyreek was a track athlete. In fact, yeah. funny story: I met Jamal for the first time at the Kansas Relays when he was up running track. Great dude. And that day I was like, holy crap, I hope this guy plays football. And I didn't even know it at the time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's how awesome. much speed he had. It's crazy. But uh, I, I too enjoy Brooks' game. I'm just going to put it out there. Samuel, um, make sure you guys like, sub, hit the bell, hit that like, will you? Uh, I know it's, I know it's off season. I know it's draft season. We're going to have full streams for you. Day one, day two. We'll be either a full stream or in and out. Depends on our marathon and if I still have a voice. Um, we are going to be doing a little bit different draft coverage this year just because we won't be together this time around. Yeah. We'll have to do that again in 25. But we are going to get to it, and we're going to have everything for you. One guy who's not getting drafted this weekend or next weekend is going to be uh, – is it Lewis or Luis? I'm not sure. Um, or I'm just going to go Louis. There. We're going Louis. Reese Zamet. I don't care what position he plays right now. If you want to call him a tight end, he could be an H. He's going to line up away from the line of scrimmage because I'll tell you one thing. He's not going to go line up against an experienced outside linebacker and not get jammed into oblivion. I I respect the rugby game. It ain't football. So let's give him a little bit of a break. I would rather see him as a split, uh, you know, a widened tight end, stand-up kind of guy, wide receiver, that's fine. I actually like him just fit and, and, and function as a running back. As, as a yeah. wing back, to tell you the truth. I think that would be the coolest part. Let's bring back the flying wedge H wing, and I'm here for it. Just have him be a wing T running back. Just attach him to, like, diagonally from the tackle and then just move him around a bunch. Let him have fun because he's not a yep. ready-made player. He is going to be best in space, guys. Don't let him be bl a blocker. Don't have him have to be blocked. Like that's you don't yeah. want any of those things. You want to avoid that. So first, start small. Let's make a roster. Let's make a roster, yeah. buddy. Let's start there, and we'll take it further from there. I'll bet you we see them have some fun with it in OTAs. Enjoy that for sure. Maybe the same thing at camp. Enjoy that as well. But I expect kind of a Justin Ross kind of phenomenon. He's going to have some yeah. big plays. He's going to do some cool things when it's not real competition. And we're going to get expectations. I'm just trying to say, yeah, when preseason games come around, that's going to be a big leap for him. And making the 53 is going to be a challenge. But I do like what it brings. Uh, you just got to remember that at his speed, he is not worthy 
in this draft. He is not Hollywood Brown speed. That's not what he's bringing to the table. In the rugby game, it's a lot flatter. It's a lot easier to turn that corner and have the speed to outrun somebody because you don't have to beat yeah. dudes that are 20 yards down. It's just what it is. But I'm excited for it. And I think most of our Brit fans are too. Um, yeah. The Irish, maybe not as much, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, shout out to all you Rapsom fans over there across the pond. I have some pals that are into that. Um, I think it's a great story, and I hope that they can continue it. Um, you know, Ryan Reynolds is a personal friend, and uh, he helps me uh, sell mint. So it's great. Um, anyway, I uh, hope that you guys are enjoying this evening. Uh, we have as well. Um, didn't get my, my Avery dose, but that's going to be okay. I know she's got plans. You know, she's grown up. She's got stuff. To do. <laughs> she got so things she got to do. Yeah, it is what it is. Thank you for all of your time, Dan. Dan's top five tackles. It's NFL 33 tomorrow. Go get signed up. You got to be behind the paywall because that's how we make that site work. My quarterbacks are up now. You can get that. EJ is going to have some confidence where we're going to go through the whole process. Draft boards. I will finish the process tonight. We will start building the board. We will have them for you next week. Be prepared. Be downloadable from NFL 33 again for free. It'll be an open uh, post there to give you our draft boards. We have our rankings that we did for, for analytics. Dan's going to hit his board. I'm going to have mine. We will have differences and we will discuss, argue, enjoy uh, in the process of creating them. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Dan, anything that I missed? Where else are you this week? What are the 17 shows you're doing? I'm going to be with Kingdom Cast. Oh, my camera just went off, you guys. That's cool, as usual. By the way, that's going to happen during the, the draft stream because my plug-in doesn't work. But I'll be doing Kingdom Cast show. I will also be on with Lance the Spoken on Saturday, which is uh, more of a apology kind of thing. You know, we didn't have the best introduction on the Twitter space, so we're going to make up for it when we do a show. Um, I'll be on with Taylor Kyles, who covers the Patriots on Thursday. I've also got another uh, I've another draft show for Cover One coming on on Thursday. So I'm I, I've got lots of different things that I'm doing, and I can't remember all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, Stan is me five years ago. You cannot <laughs> keep up with him. He will just be somewhere else in the next five minutes, as is yeah. happening right now. But um, I tried to I tried to fix the the camera thing, Dan. It just ain't. I'll it's fine. It, it, it the battery's dead. It's not your fault. It's the battery. Well, now my mouse is dead too. So we're never going to end this stream, folks. <laughs> it's just never going to stop. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We appreciate you being with us and spending your time and, and enjoying what we do. To get ready for this this epic event that is the NFL draft. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I have a, a content for you tomorrow to continue down the draft rabbit hole. Dan's got film on Wednesday. We'll have Gary back, and then we have. Jeff and I completing our preamble to the NFL draft coming up on Friday. So don't miss any of it. Five days a week, all gas, no breaks. Have a great no one. Breaks. And we'll talk to you next time. Maybe. It doesn't want to stop either. So I don't know what's going on. Sorry, right, I got so you.